This program is brought to you by NewsWorks in cooperation with the City of Eau Claire. This program is simulcast on WRFBLP 101.9. The Commission attempts to conduct its public hearings in a relatively informal manner within the constraint that we must deal with the issues before us in an orderly and business-like fashion. We give the applicant an opportunity to speak first and then anyone else in a public hearing is allowed to speak once. We do request that everyone restrict their comments to the issues before us, avoid unnecessary repetition, and be prudent in their use of time. We want to make sure that we have adequate time to deal as carefully with the last item on the agenda as the first. If you are planning to speak tonight, there are some yellow slips of paper on the back counter. Please fill one out and then hand it to Ryan, who's sitting at the front there. Um, and if you do have cell phones, please turn them on silent or turn them off so they do not interrupt the meeting. The first item on our agenda for recommendation, final plat of Camden Place. Good evening. Uh, Real Land uh, Surveying is requesting approval of the final plat for Camden Place uh, that's located uh, to the east of uh, Jeffers Road, uh, to the west of the Northwest Community Park, and then north of the, of the North Crossing. Uh, the project includes uh, 67 lots for residential development. Uh, 28 of those are for single family, and 39 are for twin homes. Uh, three of the existing uh, lots uh, are for existing homes that are within the area. Uh, the Plan Commission uh, reviewed and approved the preliminary plat back on February 5th. Uh, the final plat that you see here tonight is consistent with the plat that was, uh, the preliminary plat that was approved by the Plan Commission back in February. Uh, it meets the lot standards for the R1P district and the R2P district that were part of the general development plan that the plan commission and council approved back at that time. Uh, the plat designates uh, four right-of-ways, uh, Daisy Lane uh, going from, east, uh, from west to east that connects with uh, Jeffers Road and the Northwest Community Park, uh, Wayland Street that goes uh, north and south and connects over to the uh, park area and then over to the Sherwood Heights area. Uh, and then two cul-de-sacs, uh, Bluebell Court located right here, and then Hobbs Court located here, which actually is one section on the north side of Daisy and one side is on the south side of, of Daisy. The uh, street names for Daisy Lane and Bluebell Court were approved previously by the Communications Center, and the names Wayland Street and Hobbs Court are changes from the preliminary plat, uh, and the Communications Center has reviewed and approved those name changes. Uh, the plat includes, uh, shows three outlots that would be dedicated to the city for stormwater purposes. Uh, this lot here, here, and here. And then it also uh, shows the areas of 20% uh, uh, slope or, or more uh, that would be legally defined on the plat and, and labeled as unbuildable. Uh, one area located right here and the other located right here. And then it shows two wetland areas that are also uh, labeled and, and listed as unbuildable, one located right here and the other one located right in this area right here. Uh, utility easements uh, have been included on the plat uh, as requested by from Excel Energy, uh, AT&T, and Spectrum Cable uh, uh, Television. Uh, one of the conditions on the preliminary plat was, that, uh, was to provide adequate right-of-way uh, for Daisy Lane here uh, for a pathway connection that would connect from uh, Jeffers Road over to the Northwest Community Park uh, per city engineer's approval. Uh, we have worked with the city engineering department and the parks division. Uh, and they feel that the right-of-way as shown uh, is sufficient with an additional two-foot uh, uh, easement that would be on the north side of Daisy Lane and that would accommodate that trail uh, or pathway connection that uh, we're uh, indicating is, is needed between Jeffers Road and, and the Northwest Community Park. Uh, the development agreement uh, that would cover the street and the utility construction uh, will be considered by the City Council at their next meeting, which should be uh, a week from tomorrow. And on the Commission action tonight, 
also would include a recommendation uh, that relates to dedicating the, the right-of-way uh, that would be within the Northwest Community Park uh, that would connect up with the Shorewood Heights Parkway with uh, Wayland Street is here. So this, again, would be part of your uh, review or an approval tonight also. Uh, we're recommending approval of the final plat for Camden Place uh, and recommend the following. Uh, completion of the joint cross access and maintenance agreement provisions that were recently uh, adopted by the zoning ordinance and that would occur when the twin home lots uh, are divided at a, at a future date and then including the dedication of this right away here that actually is within the Northwest Community Park uh, this will be considered by the City Council at their meeting on the 27th then that if you have any questions are there any questions for Pat are there any questions for Pat remember I can't always see your lights <laughs> I don't see any. Thank you. Is the applicant here? Yeah. Do you need anything? No, not unless, not unless you'd like to add something. Not really. We talked about this a lot at the last meeting. Okay. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone who'd like to speak? Make sure when you come up to the forward for anyone who speaks that you introduce yourself with your name and your address. So this, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm Julie Newhouse and I reside at 5302 Shorewood Heights Parkway. And um, so we reside in this household right here on the, on the plat that you were just looking at, same, same direction that we're coming from. The current road goes right in front of our house here. The road that they're planning to put in goes right beside our house right here. I think there's 31 feet between our property line and the curb of the new road, which pretty much would allow for sidewalk and, and boulevard. And then if you see how the road curves back here, now we have almost a road as well in our backyard. So virtually our home has become surrounded on three sides now by a road, which um, had we known that, we would not have purchased the property. Um, I do wanna show you what it was that we had contacted the city before we ever purchased our property. This is the document that we received from the city. It's page 20 of the Eau Claire Waterways plan. And this would have showed our property was probably off, like right on the edge of this drawing here, because if this was the edge of the uh, park, this would probably be the cul-de-sac. And if you can see in this drawing, we had known that the road could always be extended past our home, but there was never ever any indication in the plans that the road would ever make our home into a corner lot. And another document that I want to show um, the group is that when the uh, builder had came forward, I think it was like last fall sometime, this was the original document that he, that he had shown and this was how the road was configured then where the cul-de-sac would be extended and a road would be would be built here this was turned down by the planning commission or I'm sorry by the city council and then the builder obtained more property in this area here when the additional property was uh, attained by the builder then the curved road went in to access some of those properties. So my point is, and I'll try to conclude quickly here, is that our house is here. We were first told when we moved in that there could be a possibility of an extension. Last fall, we were told that virtually there would be one lot in between our home and where this road would begin. And now, with the latest plans, it gets worse and there's 31 feet. So I guess I just really want you to realize the situation and recognize that we as, as taxpayers did our diligence in doing some homework before we purchased our property. And we really want you to just listen to the fact that you had done this planning and you had used that document and we use the document too for our planning. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Are there any questions for the speaker? I don't see any. Thank you. 
Can I just <clears throat> add one other thing? Sure. Okay. Because the because the only other thing is, I mean, we realize this is going to happen. We we aren't here to stop it from happening, but I guess what we'd like is to have further discussion on how we can be less disturbed by this roadway or if this roadway could more so follow the original plans rather than it seems like it gets closer and closer to our house each time okay thank you, thank you. If this is a public hearing is there anyone else who'd like to speak I, I will speak um, just and, um, just speaking to that we we have moved the road down as much as we can okay it, we, we are aware of the house there can and you it, put uh, the map back under so that it can be yeah. seen and, here and Oop. Sean could probably speak better to it for how far but I, I think he's thinking 70 or 80 feet is down we went as far as we could okay and, and I mean it's it's costing us more money which is neither here nor there but it, we are looking out because they the neighbors on the corner there are are affected by this you know I, I don't I won't get into how the other neighbors are affected but I, I think they are affected and we will put trees along here we'll do whatever we can to make to make it uh, right for them can as I right as we can can I ask you a question mm -hmm. um, if you go up to that top corner mm -hmm. yeah right there now is that an outlot yes so that would not be outlet. built on no Okay, and does the road and the connection go into the city park? So that's a part of the park as opposed to something that it would be abutting the property owner directly. This one here? Yeah. That goes and connects to Shorewood Heights Drive currently. Okay, that was, and is you know, that, that right of way in argument. parkland? Yeah, it goes in okay. Yeah, th this is this is the one that okay. so, uh, shows we did we did move it down as far as possible. Okay. So what, what actually happens is these outlets here are will be owned by the city. Also. Right, and so they're a buffer. They're, they're a buffer, and then that comes into the park here, and then goes up and connects with Shorewood Heights. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. I just wanted that clarification. And like I said, we we will do that. I mean, it's just it's our I feel obligation to put trees there or whatever whatever we can so there isn't you know that there isn't a direct um, sight line into the houses so okay we will do that thanks I think there's a couple questions Commissioner uh, Klinkhammer Mr. Flipsack if I'm reading this correctly that outlot is a width of about 120 feet is that correct I think so yeah comparing it to the other might even be I mean, at the that. back of their lot before. I think, yeah, 150. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions, Commissioner Larson? Thank you. Commissioner Klinkhammer asked one of my questions. The other one is, uh, so there's, apparently there's 31 feet from the house to the street. How much of that is taken up with boulevard and sidewalk? How, how many feet wide would that be? Excuse me. <laughs> let, let me step forward for just a second. Um, the dimensions that we're getting off, and these dimensions wouldn't have been on the plat because it's off in the park. Mm -hmm. But in the plans that were submitted to us, this is uh, the house of the lady that was just up here. To the extent that I can scale with the scale, this is about 40 feet from the property line to the to what would be the right-of-way line, so it'd be another foot to the back of walk. Um, this dimension here was about 31 feet to the property line, so it'd be about 32 feet to the back of the walk. So that's the general dimensions of that. So generally you're talking 40 feet through here. And then I believe this stormwater pond is about 150, was what I was reading on the side. 150 foot easement. Okay. So it's at, 40 at feet this, to, I'm sorry. At this dimension, it's hard to read off of here. Okay. So it's 40 feet to the sidewalk, and then the sidewalk to the street is another 14, 10 feet? 14. 14. From the back of the sidewalk to the curb, it'd be about 14 feet. Okay. So, all right. Thank you. And I believe coming through here, one of these sidewalks is being requested to be deferred by the developer, but that's a conversation for the council as to which side if either 
they would want to defer, but that could be part of the discussion as well. Very good. Thank you for the clarification. Are there any other questions? I don't see any. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Barrett Newhouse, 5302 Shorewood Heights Parkway. Um, where are we here? Yep, okay. you got it right. Yep. So these outlots, these outlots are all underneath power lines. So planting trees in there really isn't an option because once they get so big, the power company is going to come in and knock them down. So I don't think that's going to provide much, you know, of a barrier there. Um, and then getting back to this one here, so if, if that's about 40 feet, you know, when we bought our, our lot, we, we liked it because it was next to a park and there was a lot of, you know, trees and stuff in there. Um, right now they have the, there was some buckthorn growing in there and they came and they knocked down all that buckthorn that really opened everything up and that took, that, you know, took away a lot of our, you know, privacy or our buffer from any potential road going through. So if there's only 40 feet there, that's compared to what we had to compare to what it's going to, it's night and day difference. There, there will be very, very little in between the, you know, the sidewalk and, and our house. So I just wanted you guys to be aware of the power line. Very good. Any questions for the speaker? I don't see any. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? If there isn't, we'll close the public hearing and I'd be looking for a motion. I'll move approval with recommendations. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> Sorry, I'm ahead of you tonight. <laughs> for once. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Commissioner Peterson. Will they be required to plant street trees in be on uh, the, the road that goes through the park property? I'm not quite sure how to answer that. It's not part of the development. We are asking them to build the infrastructure, um, whether we would ask them or whether we as the city would come back and put the trees through here. I'm sure we could put, it, it could happen. I'm just not clear as to who It'd be a nice gesture. Us. All right, thank you. Commissioner Quinn. Mr. Cameron. Jensko, don't, don't run away so quick. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna regret that, standing up here. Uh, right I'll move that back up a little bit there. Uh, where, what is the property, northern property line of the park itself? Yeah. Currently, the, right there. The, the, this is the property line. Okay. And so, well, that exhibit is now gone. But um, where the, when the owner of this house got up and talked about the exhibit showing the road coming through, right. this was. Well, this is the north line of the park that was on there, so that little bit of grass would have been where their house is. Okay. So, uh, so anywhere in there we could replace the buckthorn that was taken out with any native species that we choose to. From this line right. south to be part of the park. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Any other questions? I don't see any. I, I might add one more thing mm -hmm. too. There, there is a meeting scheduled tomorrow with uh, the property owners to discuss the impacts of what this is going to be. Okay. So that will happen before we come to the, the council. Very good. Seeing no other discussion, we'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Next item on the agenda for approval. Site plan for central storage and warehouse. Cedar Falls Building Systems is uh, requesting a site plan approval for an addition to central storage and warehouse facility. It's in Gateway on the north side of town. Here's that aerial photograph. 
In 2008, this site plan was approved by the plan commission. Shows a 60,000 square foot building here. There's two proposed future phases. Uh, phase one was supposed to be the western edge. What we're looking at today is the eastern edge. Here's the site plan that is in your packet with the street trees noted. The pavement here. Nine loading docks and 60,000 square feet building. Here's the floor plan for the facility. And then also the building elevation. As mentioned, uh, in your packet is the site plan, building elevation, and floor plan for the project. Uh, the site plan shows a 60,255 square foot addition. The building addition to, uh, is for freezer and cooler storage. The site plan also adds pavement to the front for trucks to maneuver and add nine loading docks to the facility. The applicant notes the maximum number of employees is 12. The current site plan has 13 stalls. The access is two, uh, is two curb cuts that are existing, and they're not changing those. The landscape plan does note street trees along both street frontages. Uh, the future phase on the western edge will need a site plan approved by the plan commission. Exterior lighting is noted as wall packs, and they must meet the city standards. And then any trash or uh, recycle bins must be screened if they add them to the site. Uh, in your report is the engineering report. If the plan commission does uh, find this consistent uh, with staff recommendations, we have three of them. Future uh, additions shall be approved by the plan commission. Uh, if they do add trash or recycle bins, must be screened. And then the approval of grading and drainage from the engineering department. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for Ryan? Commissioner Mitchell. Thank you. It says that Venture Drive was constru constructed in 2014 and is currently under a moratorium. What's that? I'll let John answer that question. One of the things we do to prevent, um, w w when we construct a street and get the asphalt on there, we don't want people going out and putting uh, cuts. And so if there's an emergency, like if a water main breaks or if um, a utility needs to get in to repair a utility, whether it's a private utility or ours, we'll allow that. But we, we want to have the adjacent property owners planning ahead so they don't cut into a brand new street, um, just to protect the longevity of our, our roadway. Did I understand your question or? Yes, I've never seen that before. Do, you, do, we, do we do this all the time? Um, as long as I've been here oh. and for some time before then, yes. Any other questions? Okay. I have one question. For? If I may. For Ryan or for? For John. Okay. For Mr. Jensko. <laughs> Who's not going to sit down much tonight? All right. Well, we need to keep him in exercise here. It's my wellness. Program. What happened on Gateway? If that w if we have moratoriums for these streets, so we're not tearing them up. I know it's not germane to this issue, but uh, that street was hacked into on four or five different occasions. For Gateway. For yeah, the one that goes by uh, Panera Bread and. Uh, Oh, uh, up the Keystone hill. Crossing? Keystone Crossing, I'm sorry. I gave it the wrong name. My apologies. This, this may not be the forum to, to fully discuss that. Um, okay, then we won't. <laughs> I would be glad to discuss that with you afterwards. <laughs> All right, is the applicant here? Please introduce yourself with your name and address. Tom Hubbard from Cedar Falls Building Systems, 5455 Freitag Drive, Menominee. And Matt McGee, uh, also same. Uh, <clears throat> the one thing I guess we would, we would mention, there's actually uh, seven loading docks. Sorry, Ryan. Not nine. <laughs> um, not nine, it's okay. seven. Um, we had talked to John about possibly bringing in water main uh, from Venture, but at this point in time, correct? 
Sounds like we aren't going to need to. So the water main that we brought in uh, originally off of Fortune Drive is large enough that we'll be able to handle all the sprinkler system with that. Okay. Very good. Are there any questions for the applicant? I don't see any. Thank you. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone who'd else who'd like to speak to this issue? Seeing no one else in the audience, <laughs> I will close the public hearing and I'd be looking for a motion. I move approval with staff well, recommendation. Commissioner Peterson, how long have you had your light on? Doesn't matter, I'll second it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Number three on our agenda for recommendation to declare vacant land as excess land on Galloway Street. Thank you. All right. In July of 1979, the city purchased Galloway, Zero Galloway Street from Northern States Power Company for public purpose. The property was purchased for $60,000 along with the remaining value of the said property being as a gift from Northern States Power Company. Um, do you have a map? I do. Okay. I, yeah, I'm getting there. Okay. I get a couple different. The parcel is currently one. We'd be looking at splitting it into two separate parcels. This being, this is the actual parcel. It's split between the road. Okay. So we'd be, um, this would be one of the parcels. It would be the larger of the two, um, about 8.2 acres. And... This would be the northern section, and that has about 1.3 acres of land. The property is currently zoned for um, heavy industrial. The potential uses for the property, the southern property, the larger section, um, would be looked at for residential or commercial, commercial mixed use, with the northern section, the smaller one, being for multifamily residential. Um, the city assessor's office gave estimated values of the property for the larger section being between 350,000 to 500,000 and the northern section being between 80,000 and 100,000. Um, these properties would each go out for proposals. Um, <clears throat> we would retain sections of each of the properties for trail, future trail use. Um, the green section here and this section down here. Mm -hmm. And then in this larger parcel for retain it, uh, we would retain for pond usage. Um, this request was reviewed by the Waterways and Parks Commission at their February 28th meeting, um, and I'd be looking for a recommendation from the Plan Commission for the next City Council meeting. Are there any questions? Very good. Are there any questions? Commissioner Peterson. The Waterway and Parks Commission approved the, yep. the sale. You yep. just said it was reviewed. You didn't say the Oh, outcome. sorry. Yes, okay. they approved it as well. <laughs> any other questions? I don't see any. This is a public hearing, but I'm guessing we won't have much commentary <laughs> since there's no one here. <laughs> so we'll close the public hearing. Um, I'd be looking for a motion. I'll move approval. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Number four, excess land to declare property as excess land at 559 North Hastings Way. All right. Um, it is believed that the city acquired 559 North Hastings Way in 1945. This property is currently used as the fire station number 10. Due to its irregular shape, the property contains a total of approximately 25,912 square feet or 0.59 acres. Um, the property is located on the southeast corner of Birch Street and North Hastings Way. The city is currently um, in the process of constructing a new fire station 10 on Malden Avenue. Once the construction of the site, the site is completed and the city has relocated or removed all of the current city um, items from the property. The property is believed to no longer be needed. Um, we would be looking at declaring the property excess and available for sale. The property currently has a driveway here 
out off of out onto Birch Street. Um, we would remove that prior to the sale of the property. Um, there would be access, though. Mostly the access would be looking at would be come off of this road here. Mm -hmm. This is right away, and then there would be a driveway into the property, which they could look at reconstructing. Or um, the property is currently zoned P public, with the potential to be developed for commercial development. Um, we did have an appraisal done on the property in July of 2017, and it came back at 365,000. This property would go out for proposal and I'd be looking for the plan commission to make a recommendation to the city council um, to declare it excess. Are there any questions? Yeah. Commissioner Brenholt. Yeah, um, just curious, what, yeah. where do the funds go that are realized from the sale of this property and the previous one we approved? Interesting question. We've um, been working with the city manager. We're looking at potentially putting into something like a, um, I want to call it a fund balance account for um, sale of properties so that we could use it for future acquisitions. Mm. Okay. That's thank the intent. You. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Peterson. Yes, I, I totally agree that they should have no access to either North Hastings Way or Birch Street. Can mm -hmm. we, as the plan commission, make that a condition of selling it as excess land? Okay, I'd like to see that. Okay. Any other questions? Commissioner Klinkhammer. Thank you. I may be in error, but I thought sale of property, the funds from that were to go into economic development. Or was that just the sale of properties in Sky Park? Right. Yeah, okay. it'll go back to whichever, like if it's RDA, if the RDA sells it, it goes back to the RDA, it goes back to whoever sells it. This is general fund, so it go back to general fund. Commissioner Mitchell. Also, just to be clear, I think the plan commission recommends that whether it's excess property or not, I don't think we recommend anything about selling it or not. Mr. Peterson. Commissioner Peterson. That would probably come back before us when a site plan comes, if it sells, and a site plan comes as to whether they would get access or not. So I think we get another kick at the cat. And I would recommend we not do access at that time if I'm here or not. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. This is a public hearing, but once again, I don't think we're going to have much commentary. So we will close the public hearing, and I'd be looking for a motion. Commissioner Granholt. I, Grand Lund, perhaps? Oh, God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have to have those name signs to look at. I, uh, I move that we recommend approval of excess property. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item is code compliance items. Anything? Future agenda items? Additions or corrections to the minutes? Then I would call us adjourned. This program was brought to you by a cooperation between NewsWorks and the City of Eau Claire. A transcript of this meeting is available for the hearing impaired. It will be available within seven days of this telecast. Call 715-839-4912 or TDD 715-839-1689 or write Eau Claire City Clerk, P.O. Box 5148 Eau Claire, Wisconsin, 54702-5148. NewsWorks is made possible by continuing community support. If you would like to volunteer or make a donation, please contact us via phone at 715-839-5067 or online at valleymediaworks.org.